All right. If you're in chapter six, I'm going to hope by this point you have survived chapters one through five of uh, this class. But anyway, what we're going to be looking at in this chapter is momentum, and we're just going to do three examples in this video. But uh, the basic momentum equation, momentum. It's actually this is like a, if you do if you went back to elementary school, at least when I was in elementary school, you wrote on paper that looked like that. This is actually more of a Greek letter row, just kind of write it down on the side, a little bit of a crooked tail. So anyway, rho or momentum is equal to mass times velocity, and that's our basic equation for momentum. So momentum is nothing but the product of an object's mass and velocity times each other. It's kind of like going back to football if you ever got to play. Uh, sometimes not necessarily big guys all that scary because they run so slow. Uh, the problem comes in, you might have a little guy who runs really fast and he has more momentum than the big guy does. So anyway, this is our basic equation if something needs momentum. And we're going to take this a step further. Uh, this is actually going to Isaac Newton. Uh, We've looked at this equation umpteen times already, and that's F equals MA. Isaac Newton really wrote this equation first. He called it the impulse equation. I don't know if he called it the impulse equation. That's what it's known as now. MV final minus MV initial. And you will notice something odd for me. It's the first time you've ever seen me write initial and final. I usually do like a VO and a V, but... I'm trying to keep my notation consistent here. If you take a look, this is uh, excuse me, uh, Newton's impulse equation. But if we take a look, it is F equals MA. Look, velocity minus initial velocity over time. This is nothing but force and accel or mass and acceleration. It's still F equals MA. So our two equations, and this is all we need right now, momentum is equal to mass times velocity, and we can write that F delta T is known as MV final minus MV initial, which we could also just write as equal to a change in momentum if we wanted to. Uh, we could also, and I'm writing really slow, I hope you can read this, we also know this. F delta T is what's known as impulse. So sometimes you'll work a problem and it asks for you to solve for impulse. Well, if that's so, just solve for F delta T is all it's asking you to find. Uh, the only other thing I might throw out is what is the unit for momentum or for impulse? Well, if you look, it's mass times velocity. Kilogram meter per second. So there's your unit for momentum. Let's go ahead and just do some problems using these, uh, using this type of stuff. Uh, so far, I don't think we've got anything that's going to be anything too hard. A 50-gram golf ball is struck with a club. The force in the ball is zero when contact is made. It leaves the club face at 44 meters per second. So... Part A is a problem that is giving us a golf ball on a tee. So there's my golf ball on my tee. And a club come, comes in and hits the ball. Well, what's the velocity of the ball? Well, the initial velocity of the ball is zero meters per second. It hits the ball. And it says it leaves the club face with a final velocity of 44 meters per second. It also says that this ball has a mass of 50 grams, which 50 grams would be 0 0.05 kilograms, which is what we need. And now it just simply says, uh, a estimate the impulse in the collision. So this problem wants us to find Impulse. So again, the word it asks you to find is impulse. Well, that means we're looking for F delta T. In other words, that is what we're going to solve for, impulse. Um, a lot of my students call it the fat equation. But anyway, whatever helps you memorize it. So this is equal to MV final minus MV initial. Well, V initial is zero, so scratch that. So all we're left with is 0 0.05 times the velocity final, 44 
meters per second. So in this problem, we've got 05 times 44, which is 2.2, and I probably should have done that in my head, but oh well, I'm getting lazy, I guess, in old age. 2.2 kgms, that is my impulse. I'll just write it out because it takes a little while to get used to this F delta T or this fat equation here. But anyway, that's all we're doing on number one. And at this point, you're probably thinking, if the whole chapter is this easy, I'm about to make a 100. Oh, come on, guys. You know it's going to get a little bit more fun. So let's get another sheet of paper out and take a look at the next problem. Next problem, someone has dropped a 100-gram ball onto the floor. So someone has dropped a ball onto the floor. And what it wants to know is this. It tells us, let's just look at this part first. It tells us somebody has a ball, and this ball is at a height of 2 meters. And what it wants to know is what is the momentum of the ball, what is the momentum right when it strikes the ground? Well, that's what it's looking for is that momentum. Well, it told us that the ball is 100 grams, which would be 0.1 kilograms. If I want to know this momentum, I just need to know its velocity. Geez, how can I find the velocity of something that fell? Oh, wait a second. Let's go all the way back to Chapter 2. Huh, what in the world? How can I? Wait a second. Third equation, V squared equals VO squared plus 2AY. The velocity at the top is 0. V squared would be equal to 2 times, it's falling with gravity, negative 9.8, times it fell 2 meters, which means for me, my Y is negative 2. So negative 2. So what we end up with here is the square root of 4 times 9.8, which is... 4 times 9.8. Let's see if I can make this calculator behave properly. 6.3. About made a calculator error there. So that means that this ball has a velocity of 6.3 when it hits the ground. Therefore, its momentum would be 0.1 times 6.3, which is the same as dividing by mm, 1 tenth. So this would be 0.63 kgms. And there's that part. Now, for part B of this problem, part B says that the ball hits and then goes up into the air and stops. And it says it does that. It has a Y of 1.5 meters into the air. When I say how high, you say third equation again. V squared equals VO squared plus 2AY. What is its velocity at the top? It goes up, slows down, slows down, slows down, and stops. So if we want to find the momentum as it leaves the ground, we need to know what its initial velocity is. So this would be 0 equals VO squared plus 2 times negative 9.8 times 1.5. And let's see, that negative will cancel when we bring it to the other side. So 2 times 9.8 times 1.5. So this is 29.4 equals VO square. So the square root of that answer is 5.4 meters per second. Oop, I'm sorry to put a box around that. That's not an answer yet. My bad. It wants to know the momentum, which again is nothing but mass times velocity. So this would be 0.1 times 5.4, which would be 0.54 kgms. And there would be our solution to that problem. All right, there is one more example problem. So far, these are, again, once you get through this chapter 5, it is it is just like the whole world gets so much better now at this point in physics. We are through with the energy part and all that. In a crash test, a 1.5 times 10 to the third kilogram car collides with a wall. The initial and final velocities are negative 15 and positive 2.6. 
If the collision lasts for 0.15 seconds, what is the impulse of the collision and what is the force? All right. This problem has a car hitting a wall, which I will draw as a dot. And it says that the initial velocity of the car is negative 15 meters per second. It then hits a wall and bounces off with a final velocity of positive 2.6 meters per second. So the signs are very important here that you know it was going this way. And that goes for this whole chapter. Pay attention to things going left and right and up and down in these problems. Matter of fact, I hate to say something. That makes me just realize something. Theoretically, I've missed this problem. I know I'm going all the way back to here, but the thing is, this velocity, I forgot that the third equation is kind of not very true about its velocities. This should have been a negative velocity because this object was falling, which means this first momentum should be a negative momentum. I'd like to take this moment to apologize to my mom. Sorry, Mom. I'd like to apologize to the great state of Alabama. I feel as though I failed you when I forgot that negative. But I promise you one thing. It will not happen again. So, for the rest of this chapter, we will pay attention to our velocities, lefts and rights and ups and downs. Later on, it will come into great importance. So, it tells us that this car has a mass of 1.5 times 10 to the third kgs. So now let's see what we can do. It asks us to find the impulse. Well, that's easy. It's wanting us to use the fat equation. MV final minus MV initial. Now, when I do these problems, I'm bad to pull M out. Oops, V initial. I like to pull the M out, factor it out. So now all I got to do is 1.5 times 10 to the third times 2.6 minus negative 15. So this ends up 2.6 plus 15, so 17.6 times 1.5 10 to the third. So this ends up 26,400 kgms. Now this is the impulse. And it asks for us to find that. But it also asks us to find the force. It tells us that the time of the crash is 0.15 seconds. Well, all we've got to do now is force. It says that delta T is 0.15 equals 26,400. So divided by 0.15, I'm going to go ahead and write 100. Wow, check this out. 176 kilonewtons, so 176,000 newtons of force present in this problem. All right. Anyway, I hope this gets you started on these first problems. Most of them are going to be very easy. But anyway, take a look. You'll use these equations, and good luck.